Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Good morning, and I have to tell you that I am, this is going to be a good morning. I can't wait for you to listen again to Dr. Gustavo Ferrer. We've had him on before. He is our star pulmonologist. Good morning, Dr. Ferrer. Good morning. Thank you for being with us again. And your article, the, the November issue just came out, and it was really surprising for me to read about heartburn, a hidden reason for mystery coughs. I, I don't think people had any idea about that. Oh, that's, uh, that's good to know, Anita, because um, heartburn has become um, an issue in the last 30 to 40 years in um, worldwide. And primarily in Western civilization, it, it, is, it is a very common problem. And the implications goes not, not only to um, stomach and the esophagus issues, but um, the cough is one of the most common reasons that is triggered by, by acid reflux. Um, they, they are, the, the one that triggers the cough, we, we call, um, there are two types. We call it acid and non-acid. There are sometimes that you get reflux that is not acid the one that it comes out all the way up to the throat. And uh, so the cough receptors are lining up around the entrance of the esophagus at, behind the tongue and, uh, and, and is by far is one of the most common reasons for people having um, um, cough. You know, it's interesting. I have never had heartburn, but it doesn't heartburn make some people think they're having a heart attack? The, uh, there is um depends on the severity. There are there are reflux that is very silent. There's acid reflux that is very minimal that people don't feel it coming up, um, and it goes all the way to a very severe reflux when people truly feel like it. You know they're having um, they, they get esophageal spasm, and and those they can have sharp pain that just mimic the pain that people get with um, with a heart attack. Yeah, so that's uh, I have to know the difference. Well, I was interested in your article where you call something the bridge zone. Will you explain that? <laughs> I love that. Yes, that's absolutely, that's absolutely right. You know, I call the bridge zone um, the area. Um, you know, we we live in a in a time in the last fifty years in medicine that we have gotten um, very specialized. We have. Um, doctors specialize in all kinds of things. Uh, um, you go to an orthopedic doctor, and they are specialized in hand. Um, in, in some areas of the world, you have people special, specializing even in finger surgery. In, and, and when it comes to medicine, we do not escape that movement. Um, the, uh, the nasal oral pharyngeal area, it is, uh, it is cover the nose by the ear, nose and throat, the, uh, the mouth by the dentist. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the esophagus by the gastroenterologist, and right behind is the pulmonologist. But right behind the tongue, there is the area where all these come together, when the sinuses and the nasal passages end up behind the tongue, the, uh, the, stump, the esophagus begin um, to open up, and, and, and the windpipe, the trachea, it is actually right behind that. So when all these collide together, uh, that area, there's no specialty and nobody has claimed that area. So it is an area where most of the issues that we have with vocal cord related problems, most of the issues that we have with post-nasal drip, most of the issues that we have with acid reflux, it is there where, where this area um, is the area responsible for the symptoms coming out of there. Uh, and because everybody is specialized, everybody's looking at their own area. And, and, and that is the reason I call it a bridge. It's a bridge to the lungs. It's a bridge to the stomach. It's a bridge to the nasal passages. It's a bridge to, the, to actually where the allergies spend a lot of time in their practices. So this is the reason I call it the breach zone. Well, one thing that, of course, you've known for so long, but now that I've met you, I notice a lot of people have these little coughs. They have these little things that they they breathe, and I, I I don't know. And they always say, "I've been." I said, "You ought to really go to a doctor to to take care of that." No, no, it's not a cold. I just keep this. I don't know what it is. They said I'm fine, so that's why I continue to recommend you, Doctor Ferrar, because. I know that you're, you are, you, you do this on, you, you do these unusual examinations and you seem to have these, 
these answers that are not so always so traditional. That's from your Cuban upbringing, right? <laughs> That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right, Anita. Um, you know, one of the things that I um, I tell people um, um, everywhere I'm invited to speak is that that um, you know, Cuba medicine, the Cuban medicine, has um, things to add to what we have. Um, today in America and worldwide. And one of the things as a clinician that they do very well is that they, they look people from head to toe. I, I remember in my formation in Cuba that my professors never, um, even when they, when I, I trained as a pulmonologist first time in Cuba, in, and we looked patients from, from, from head to toe. We never separated the lungs from, from the whole body. And so, you know, when we when we looked at the patient um, uh, as a as a full unit, as a human being, um, where all these things is all connected with the brain, with the psychological issues, with interaction with the environment, we can gain a better picture of whatever is going on. I think the 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 medicine today is too too specialized, and then we we tend to just jump quickly into a diagnosis and treat people right away and and that actually is where we miss a lot of things and and also we miss one of the most important things that is um, it is key in medicine it is the art of interacting with another human being that we 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 tend to lose that when the medicine is too fast-paced so we don't we don't connect uh, between each other um, and that connection between patients and doctor it is at the heart is at the core of the relationship is at the core of developing trust. And, and to me, this is one of the issues why trust is so low um, in, in Americans' professionals in medicine in particular today is because we're not allowing to, to time to, to get to know each other, to get to know how I'm going to um, explore a little bit more um, what the patient has and how I'm going to be able to, exp- uh, to help them better. That's an excellent discussion, and I agree with you so much, but you somehow... I guess we're trained with that idea, but many doctors, I even know that there are doctors that when you go in, they're so busy recording your information on their computer, they never really look at you. You know, that that is true. That is true. And I, I, you know, I I practice um, the same medicine and my team and our team practice the same medicine. And I know that that is extremely hard to to comply with all the things, the regulatory things that we have, and to put the patient information in in, in the records and and so on, uh, but I but I also know Anita that it's very easy to justify our actions. Um, I I I don't think that we should ever contaminate the beauty of medicine um, by by the waves that we have of issues with medical records and legislations and issues and all that. It is too too. Uh, an important relationship between the patient and the doctor that shall, that shall never be break or be broken by the, these kind of issues that we have outside um, the, outside the, the patient's um, the, the exam room. So I I, I tend to um, you know I have a wonderful team and my team of doctors, our team of doctors and nurses um, that work with us. We want to spend a little bit more time. And, and, and Anita, I'm going to tell you the following: research after research shows that um, it's not the quantity of time that you got to spend; it is the quality. Um, the research after research shows that people have perception that their doctor has to spend a lot of time when they just spend five minutes, you know, just listening and carefully paying attention to them rather than typing in, in the computer. Just five minutes, and then you can do the rest on your notes. Um, this is actually a in, in, in national movement today. Many people are doing this, in, and, I, and I think it's the right thing to do. You know why, Anita? Because tomorrow, uh, one of us, when we go to the doctor, um, I have been in doctor's offices with my family where I take my daughters and my kids and my, my, my parents, and I do want the doctor to pay attention to me and to pay attention to what I said. And, and, and if I want them to do that, I think that we all need to do it. You're great. I love hearing you speak about this. Let me tell little people a little bit more about you. Your organization is called ICE, which stands for Intensive Care Experts, and it's Aventura Pulmonary, and uh, they do comprehensive pulmonary service. They have second opinions. If you have advanced lung disease, uh, if you have a chronic cough, 
pulmonary hypertension, COPD, asthma, sleep apnea. The Aventura Pulmonary Institute's highly skilled board certified medical team is committed to bringing the most comprehensive pulmonary service with the highest quality of professionalism. Their award-winning physicians are dedicated to honoring and serving the health interest of their patients. And you could hear, doctor. this is Dr. Ferrer's organization, and he has five other, I believe you have five other pulmonologists, correct? Uh, we have and, four pulmonologists, and we have three pulmonary fellows, so it's, um, it's, it's a very wonderful team. That we big have. practice. Now, appointments are available. Now, get your pencils out. Remember, I tell everybody, this is Pencil Talk Radio. Write this phone number down, please. 954-482-4747. And I'm going to do that again. 954-482-4747. If you want to get on their website, it's called ICE, I-C-E, Health net.com they are located in aventura and let me just tell you i don't care where you live whether it's palm beach county broward or miami dade when you have a serious lung problem you need to go to the very best organization and you should really go down there and take care of it and you'll be you'll feel so much better so i want to tell you something exciting dr ferrer wrote this incredible book called cough Cures, the complete guide to the best over-the-counter drugs and natural remedies for acute and chronic coughs. He is. Uh, we will feature his book on the cover of our December issue because it's a wonderful book. I can't put it down. It's uh, something you'll definitely want to purchase. So, Dr. Um, Dr. Ferrer, I know that flu season is coming now and people have coughs and colds. So how do, what happens if they come in to see you? What is the first thing that you would do to help somebody? Well, I, you know, the, the first thing that I, again, um, if they come to our office, we do a, a very comprehensive exam and, and, and gather the history in, in order to, to make the, uh, the appropriate diagnosis. And, and if the patient is a smoker, well, we, we, we go that route because the smokers, they have the tendency to have bronchitis and have more severe issues. So we try, we try to give a, um, a specific treatment for what they have. But for common colds and flus, um, the, the main issue that we're trying to, to tackle right away is, is the rhinosinus problems. The, uh, um, there is a good number of people today in Nita that they are developing chronic rhinitis and chronic sinus problems, and all of this begin uh, with an acute, severe inflammatory infectious process, viral infectious process. And usually those are related to the common cold and flu and, and during this season. So those are the patients that tend to have rhinosinus issues that last for many, many days um, when somebody else in the family have um, a common cold that lasts a few days. So when they come to us, we do a comprehensive exam, and, and then we try to use a combination of natural remedies and, and, and conventional medicine using the very best of both. Um, to, to treat the symptoms and to to um, to to uh, to try to help our patients um, the best. Um, we all believe in our team that the best medicine is the medicine first that listen to the patient, second that incorporate all things that are available that have the best quality of evidence to treat them, whether it is natural remedies or conventional remedies. Um, all this has tremendous value in in treating um, our patients. And. The best part about this, though, about what you do, I know that we, of course, have other uh, people who are primary care physicians. And when someone comes to you, I'm sure you communicate with the primary care physician and they with you. And it's really important that everybody knows what's going on, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. We we make the effort to um, communicate back to the physician um, via letter uh, when we have um, issues that we know that that require um, collaboration between um, the group of teams. We tend to reach out to the different doctors, and, and sometimes if we can speak directly, we ask our patients that when they go to the follow up from the doctor's office to give us a call and, and we will talk to their doctors and um, it is important that the collaboration remains um, tight between the medical team to help our patients. 
Yeah, I think because so many times, in fact, that's what's happened with people with all these medications and why we're having this terrible uh, prescription drug problem. But it's because they go to one doctor, they go to another doctor, they keep getting all these pills, and then one doctor doesn't know what the other doctor's uh, prescribing. And that's that's absolutely right. You know, we are, uh, uh, you know, the 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 opioid the pain medications uh, crisis is actually showing up uh, to all is showing up to all of us uh, that, that there is a deeper problem be, behind that. Uh, there is a problem uh, that you know because we are so busy and full of things that we have to do. We don't take a look at the medication list. We don't we don't try to explore a little bit more the places where the patient has gone to. Um, if we explore a little bit more the history, um, then we're going to be able to, to find um, many of these issues that we have today. And, you know, and, and, and I do know cases um, um, that there are people that are abusing uh, those medications as, as drugs, but I have many, many cases, Anita, that have been patients that have chronic pains, that have chronic issues, and, 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 and they take it because their their trusting is going to help them. But they have so many other issues that that's when people end up, uh, unfortunately, uh, having terrible events and they even die out of this. And Dr. Ferrer, from reading your book, and of course I'm probably halfway through, you have, you have prescribed so many um, natural remedies of the herbs that you use. And we talked about that, about growing them. So since I spoke to you, um, I, I only have a windowsill in my, my condominium, but it faces south. And I have bought a couple of herbs, and I'm growing them. I have to keep them well watered. And I love this rosemary, for one. And then I uh, have... that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is, and of course, because of Dr. Fair, I started on smoothies. I used to drink uh, fat-free milk. Now I drink um, almond milk. I mean, you have really made a big difference in my what I do. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I recommend my patients, you know, when um, to find some of those herbs, and and also there, there is also a great connection with nature when you do that. Um, that you grow your own herbs, herbs and herbs, and 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 you put it on your own seasoning, and this natural smell of those things are phenomenal. Um, yeah, it's true. Uh, I'm a milk is is also. Um, you know, the, the, there is a study after a study that shows that, um, you know, there are issues with, um, with um, uh, uh, milk, cow milk, dairy products. Um, but uh, uh, there is also a lot of controversies behind that. But we do know in cases by cases after many years of practicing that people um, respond a lot better. The older we get, the better it is to use uh, other than um, com- that cows or, or dairy products. Um, almond milk is at the heart of that. Um, we see it in cases by cases. I told you the story of my younger daughter. Uh, she has rhinosinus issues that I don't know from where began. Um, everything was fine, but she always is stuffy. And, and we switch over to almond milk a um, few years ago. And then um, all this um, mucus that was running behind her throat um, disappear disappear and and so we all start using that and and we feel like you know digestion is better um so it is it is a good product and we 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 use it and we recommend it to our patients that have a lot of mucus a lot of secretion actually for acid reflux anita that we've been talking about it for heartburn um uh, um, substituting conventional milk or uh, cow's milk for um for almond milk it is an an excellent alternative for 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 that reason for acid reflux to treat acid reflux the, but the one question i had had before of course i read your book was well but i wanted enough vitamin i wanted to have enough vitamin d with the milk for the calcium but you're still getting that with the almond milk that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And keep in mind, uh, in mind, um, and you know, I have um, mentioned before, and we'll continue to mention last uh, this year, um, two of the largest studies done in the country. Um, they chose that people that developed chronic rhinosinus problems. Actually, one of them was in an NPR feature this year from Mayo Clinic. It was the supplementation of calcium, oral calcium, um, oral vitamin D3, uh, for people that have low calcium and all um, these issues because. 
um, uh, despite um, enriching the milk and juice with calcium, um, we still have issues with vitamin D3 and calcium. And low vitamin D3 is at the heart of all these problems. And low vitamin D3 has been connected with um, uh, abnormality of the uh, of the epithelial, the tissue lining the nasal passages and the lungs. And people with recurrent bronchitis, asthma uh, and included in there, um, we always um, today check the vitamin D3 because we, we know that tends to be low. But, uh, you know, you still get good load of calcium with um, with your almond milk and, and, um, and you know, adding um, vegetable, green leaves, vegetables are and, and are another route to get significant amount of the calcium that we need daily. Um, but that has to be in combination with vitamin D3 that we get it through exposing ourselves to sunlight. Um, uh, it's because we spend so much time indoor, um, there's not enough um, that we get. Um, so supplementation is the best alternative uh, for that. And, 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 and that's what we recommend for patients that have uh, low vitamin D3. So my guest is Dr. Gustavo Ferrer. <clears throat> Not only is he the author of Cough Cures, but he is, of course, the founder of ICE, which is Intensive Care Experts, for an appointment of, to uh, go and talk with him or any of his other extraordinary pulmonologists. Call 954-482-4747. Again, that's 482-4747. Or go on the web to ICE, I-C-E, Health net.com and i just talking about the uh talking about the almond milk so i've become an addict because of you sorry it's not that kind of an addict but i leave here at eight o'clock after the show and i can't wait to get home and make my almond milk my banana my strawberries my blueberries my kale um i put flax seeds in now i'm putting a little garlic in Thanks to my doctor, Dr. Mencia, who told me to do start doing that. And I mean, I can't wait to get that drink. The trouble is I'm probably drinking too much of it. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> fantastic? It's an extraordinary way to start your day. Um, it is excellent. It is um, highly nutritious. Uh, you have almost everything that you need there in terms of vitamins and minerals and, and all kind of nutrients. So it is, it is phenomenal. It is phenomenal and is it's something that I do recommend. Um, I also recommend my patients um, to, to, to sip in with the, um, with the smoothies that they make in the morning, in the morning um, a, a peel of um, a probiotic combination of prebiotics that you get with all these nutrients and your probiotic will protect you from um, many of the infectious problems and even skin problems and many issues that we have today. So, um, oh, I forgot to tell you, I also put yogurt in it, plain yogurt. Fantastic. So that's my probiotic, right? There you go. Fantastic. No, I mean, I, so now I'm, I have a silly question. I am someone that loves to really eat, but if I had one of these in the morning and then I had one, in the evening, is that overkill? Is that too much? I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's actually a, an excellent um, idea. I'll tell you why, Anita. If we look through the history of humankind, um, we always, uh, we always had a civilization. We have two meals, big meals that saw uh, during during um, the 24 hours. Um, it is in the last hundred years or so that we add multiple meals through the day, and and I think that that's the origin of many of the problems that we have. So, if, at the end of the day, we're going to park our bodies and we're not going to go to many places. So, it is advisable that the last meal of the day is um, is is light and easy to digest, and what better than a good smoothie from time to time? Right. I mean, I just. You know, it's so funny when I met Dr. Gustavo, he's, he's he's so trim and he's so attractive and he, you know, and he's so you can hear him Thank now. You. He's so he has this great charis, charisma. And and so I, I did ask him, what do you do and what do you eat? And of course, he told me about the smoothie. And so now um, I write that down and I've actually lost a little weight, if you want to believe that. That is a, another <laughs> plus that we get for that. <laughs> oh, you're yeah, you're really good. Well, we're also going to have a big expo, and hopefully, we're gonna you all are going to get to meet Dr. Ferrar because we have some exciting things planned. But I can't wait for you to read his book. Please do buy the book. You will be 
I mean, I don't care if you have lung problems, you have anything, you'll want to read this because it's not just about lungs. It's actually, I think it's more about herbs than anything. You should be an herbologist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anita. Thank you. And so I'm, um, I'm so thankful that you were able to take time out of your busy schedule to come and be on our radio show. And um, if, be sure to read his article in the November issue of Boomer Times. It's just come out. It's on page three. And that's uh, part one. The second one, it's uh, especially if you're suffering from acid reflux, he says, the simplest way is to try some natural treatments for acid reflux. And in his next article, he's going to share 10 top tips for avoiding heartburn without using medications, which can have actually fatal consequences. So be sure to read his article and then you'll read the next one in uh, January. I mean, in December, excuse me. So thank you, Dr. Uh, Ferrara, and my very best to your beautiful family, and hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Anita. Have a wonderful weekend. Yes, you too. Bye.